Hello everybody, this is the Great Outdoors blog and today we're having a podcast. My name is Sam Kinghorn and I'm a contributor on this blog and today we are joined by uh, Ryan Concanon. He is my roommate and friend. Pleasure to be here. Uh, today's topic of concern is fishing. Uh, Ryan, what is your experience with fishing? Uh... I've been fishing all over the world. Usually my family vacations revolve around fishing. So I've been to multiple places from uh, Outer Banks, North Carolina, to Costa Rica, to Canada, to Florida Keys. So So how did you get into fishing? Is it a family thing? Yeah, my mom grew up fishing uh, because she lived kind of in the outdoors because her dad was an outdoorsman. So they would go down to the river and fish a lot and trap. Um, And my dad grew up uh, just fishing in the local ponds for bass and bluegill and such. So is, uh, so you have a brother too, right? I do. Yeah, so do you go fishing with him a lot? Is it a good bonding experience with your brother? Yeah, I would say uh, we usually go fishing. uh, We have a neighborhood pond. We'll go fishing probably once a week over the summer when uh, we both lived at home. Um, I would say that's probably one of the main things that grew our relationship stronger. So what would be your favorite place? I guess what is your favorite place that you've gone fishing? And then where is your, like, most... Where do you go the most, I guess, around Indiana? Uh, Where I go the most, like I said, is probably the neighborhood pond. Uh, We're lucky that our neighborhood pond has up to four pound bass, which is absurd for Indiana. Uh, Average in Indiana is probably a one pound bass, so uh, we're lucky to have that. Uh, My favorite place I've been fishing was Costa Rica. We got to catch sailfish, and the majority of the sailfish are seven feet long, up to 100, 150 pounds. Uh, And they're far stronger than any freshwater fish. It usually takes about 15 minutes to reel them in. Shoot. Um, I'm pretty ignorant about fishing, so um, could you explain the process of fishing, like what you need, like the gear, and then how do you pick a spot and what do you fish for? Yeah, so it's going to be based off of what you're fishing for. Uh, basic necessities is you're going to need a rod with a reel, and they'll, ha- they'll need to match um, strength, and then uh, you'll need fishing line that goes along with your tackle and then you'll have some sort of bait or a hook with live bait. Um, and it's gonna be different for freshwater versus saltwater, um, just depending on what you're fishing for. Saltwater fish tend to be a lot stronger than freshwater fish, so if you're fishing for a five pound fish in freshwater, you're gonna use five pound tackle. If you're fishing for a five pound fish in saltwater, you can use 10 pound to 15 pound tackle. And when they say tackle, it's mostly just the line strength and uh, the strength of the reel that you're using. And with bait, do you prefer live bait or the whatever it is, cause the artificial stuff? Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> what, it's, is there a it's, different, what's better? It's, it's not what you prefer, it's what the fish prefer. Uh, for freshwater, uh, artificial works fairly well. Uh, you can use, I mostly fish for largemouth bass, so you can use anything from a plug to a, a rubber worm. Uh, we tend to find that the rubber worm works uh, when it's colder outside because the fish like to hang towards the bottom and the rubber worm sits on the bottom when you're fishing Uh, but when in the middle of the summer we will use plugs because they stay up near the surface and they flash and move around a lot Um, but in saltwater uh, usually live bait is preferred by those fish they don't like to mess around with the any plastic lures or anything like that because they like the smell they like the blood Uh, they can smell the oils better than the freshwater fish so usually when we go fishing uh, in the ocean, we use shrimp, squid, or little pinfish. Uh, usually it's like uh, one to two inch silver, flashy looking fish. And is there are there differences in the reel that you use? Like, do you prefer one or the other? Yeah, so uh, when you start fishing, you'll have a, a, a reel where you press the button and you sling the rod, and when you let yeah. go of the button, the bobber will fly off the end along with the line. But... Uh, what I use now is uh, just a spinning rod. So there's a lever on top, you flip it over, you hold the line, and then you cast. Um, and you can use those in salt water as well. They just get bigger and tougher. Um, but once you go up to try to catch uh, you know, a marlin or something, something that's pushing over 100 pounds, then you start to use, a, I don't know exactly, I guess it's still a spinning reel, but the spin is uh, sideways. And uh, you have to push the line back and forth for it to even out so you don't clump the line all in one spot. And 
And uh, we don't own any of those reels because they're 1500 bucks a piece. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of my friends have those uh, when they were fishing in high school. Have you ever been uh, fly fishing before? Uh, I took a course one time uh, on how to fly fish. And I learned how to do it, but we were doing it in the middle of Zionsville in our local river, and there's yeah. no fish in our local river. Uh, so I didn't get any enjoyment out of it, and I'll probably not do it again. It unless seems I'm like going a, to Canada. a lot of work uh, <laughs> for doing that. When you're fly fishing, it's more about the getting your technique down than it is actually catching a fish. Uh, yeah. Those people more enjoy being in the environment as opposed to catching the fish, and I would much rather catch the fish. Yeah. Um... So fishing is kind of like a family thing and like sentimental. So what is your, I guess, favorite part of fishing? I don't know if we've... Yeah, so there's a lot of downtime in fishing. Um, And usually we'll go with a guide uh, wherever we visit. So like when we went to Canada uh, to catch white sturgeon, uh, we're on a river and you're sitting in a boat with our captain and he'll tell you about all his fishing stories and we can talk about our family experiences in fishing and learn different stuff that we possibly didn't know. Uh, that we've all experienced Um, but then it's funny because you'll be talking and then right off the bat if a fish bites then everyone has to stop talking we're focused only on catching the fish so with the the white sturgeon in Canada um, we're sitting in a jet boat because you have to use a a jet boat because the river is so strong and basically you just park right up on the bank Uh, you'll throw salmon row which are salmon eggs out into the river and you just wait and and it can take anywhere from five minutes to two hours for a sturgeon to come along. Um, and when we were fishing there, uh, a regular day, they said, was uh, two sturgeon. I believe we caught six or seven, the biggest one being uh, seven foot, two inches, 250 pounds. It took us about 25 minutes to reel in. Uh, and then we got to take pictures with it on the side of the bank because once the sturgeon is facing the bank, uh, it doesn't see anywhere to go, so it doesn't move at all. It's just perfectly still. Um, and then when we had to release him, he just turned his head back out towards the middle of the river, uh, and he'll kick real hard, and, and he pushed us all into the river, and the river's freezing because we're up in Canada, and it's all glacier melt. And, yeah. Yeah. So do you have any, uh, is that your favorite fishing story? Do you have any? I think that's, yeah, I think that's my favorite fish that I ever caught, uh, partially because it's the biggest, and yeah. and also it's a very unique looking animal. I don't know if you've ever seen a white sturgeon. It's basically like... I think I've seen your picture. It, it looks like a dinosaur, yeah. and uh, it doesn't have scales. It feels like... Uh, it kind of feels like latex, like a wet latex skin. Um, yeah. And uh, what is the most common f- like fish you fish for in Indiana? Or like, what are you... Is there a common fish? Yeah, for Indiana, it's mostly ponds and rivers. So most people are fishing for large or smallmouth bass, and then... Uh, bluegill okay so is so those only live in small ponds and rivers and stuff like that and lakes yeah yeah they're freshwater fish so they're mainly ponds rivers lakes and do you have a favorite fish at all (laughs) Oof. um my favorite fish for fishing would probably be sailfish uh, because they jump out of the water and they can get like i said a hundred plus pounds and when they jump out of the water they're jumping 10 to 12 feet out of the water uh but my favorite fish overall is probably the barracuda mm-hmm. and because i go scuba diving as well as snorkeling and when you see a barracuda in the water it can sit perfectly still and uh they also don't have eyelids fish don't have eyelids so they'll per- sit there perfectly still with their huge beady eyes looking at you uh, and they show their teeth at all times and it's probably the scariest experience I've ever had while being in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. So you you also scuba dive yeah. and sea fish and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, so we usually like to, uh, when we go on vacation, we'll go scuba dive if if it's not in Canada, because obviously it's yeah. cold there. And we like to see like what fish is in the reefs and what fish we can catch, and then we'll go fishing. Okay. Um, and you usually go to the local bait shop, and whoever's there will tell us how to catch each type of fish, because you know, they're always the geniuses of the fishing trade as well as salesmen, so sometimes they lie to you. But for the most part, they're giving you the right stuff. Yeah, I haven't really thought about it before. Uh, scoping out <laughs> the fish before you you go uh, go out there and go get it. Um, hmm, what has been your... Did you already say... You, was Canada your favorite family vacation? It wasn't my favorite family vacation, but it was my but favorite like your, fishing, fishing trip. Yeah. Yeah. So your whole family goes on the fishing trips? Yeah. 
Okay. That's pretty cool. And what are all the different places you've been? Uh, we've been to Outer Banks in North Carolina, and then Outer Banks we caught Mahi Mahi. Uh, we only went out for one day, um, but we caught, I think, 17 Mahi Mahi, and the biggest one being uh, 15 pounds. And uh, for Mahi, they, they look to be rather thin fish, but after you fillet them, there's a lot of meat. So a 15 pound Mahi is like three dinners for a, a, my four person family. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of food. Um, that one was interesting because I was fairly young when we went on that and I got to catch a lot of the fish. Um, and then we went to Costa Rica and we caught sailfish and we also caught a mahi on that fish while fishing for sailfish. Um, and that mahi was much larger. It was probably pushing 20 pounds and we had it for three meals and had leftovers still. Um, and the next trip we went on was, uh, the Vancouver, Canada and we got to catch salmon. Um, uh, fishing for salmon was odd because most of the fishing we like to do, it's either you're in a boat and you're trolling for the fish, which means you're dragging the baits behind the boat, or you're casting and then reeling it in. But with the salmon, uh, what you do is you hook your line up to a big dead weight, and you drop the dead weight down 250 feet into the water, and then you just sit there and wait. <laughs> so the way they did it is uh, it's a three-person per boat. It's basically a rowboat with an engine on it, and you go out around these islands near Vancouver, and you just sit. And so it's just you talking to the the fishing guide. So it was me and my brother sitting in this boat with this fishing guide. And uh, and we're in Canada, so we're kind of thinking, you know, uh, this guy's going to be pretty friendly. Like, you know, and he was, but he's cussing up a storm at us. So it's kind of funny because it goes against what we thought was going to be happening. Uh, But then out of nowhere, your line's 250 feet down and you hear it snap off of the weight because it's in a clip. And then you just start reeling. And and the tackle is so heavy there that they just put, you just start reeling and you reel it all the way to the top. And sometimes it'll die when it comes up because the pressure uh, is a difference. Um, but if it's not dead when you get it in the boat, you measure it, and then uh, he'll hand you the club, and you smack it on the head and kill it in the boat. <laughs> so that was kind of a eye-opener because we didn't know that's what was going to happen when we caught mm-hmm. the first fish. And we get it in the boat, and he hands me the club, and he goes, hit it. <laughs> so we're like, oh. <laughs> so we caught king salmon is what the salmon we are catching, and we caught one coho salmon. And coho salmon are smaller, but much better tasting. And then also in Canada, we went on, uh, I can't remember the name of the river, but that's where we caught the sturgeon. Uh, the sturgeon are freshwater fish. And uh, the river that we're in is just basically mud. It's just like brownest water you've ever seen. So a sturgeon has eyes, but it can barely see anything. Um, and it goes based off of its, uh, I don't know if it's the same sensory glands as a shark, but basically that idea to feel its way around uh, and it's mostly a bottom feeder. Like I said, we were fishing with salmon row eggs, so you just toss those in, they sit on the bottom, and they'll find them. Uh, and the next trip that we've been on now two times is we go to Isla Morada, which is in the Florida Keys. Um, the My favorite fish that we've caught there was a barracuda, uh, mostly because you don't usually catch a barracuda because they can bite through any type of line or metal leader that you have on it, but we did catch one, and it was uh, the right size, and we got to take it on our boat and eat it for dinner. And it kind of tastes like a uh, sailfish, or I don't know if you've ever had sail or swordfish, but that's kind of what it tastes exactly. like. Uh, and then there's one interesting fish that we always catch when we go to the Florida Keys. It's called a unicorn file fish. And they have like really small mouths because the way they eat is they'll wait for a larger fish to die, or in our case, a uh, larger fish to be reeled up towards the boat, and they'll come up and they'll bite little hunks off of the sides of the fish uh, as you're reeling it in. So you can see them. They come right up to the boat. So what we would do is we would throw a larger bait in and let it dangle there. And then myself or Justin would grab the net and throw it in the water and catch them. Um, and they were actually the best tasting saltwater fish I've ever had, even though they're like only 12 inches long. So, and, but what mostly caught in the Florida Keys is yellowtail snapper. That's what they're famous for. Um, but... All of the yellowtail snapper that are of size are in the protected areas. So yeah. we rarely caught one that was the right size that we could eat because they have to be 12 inches or something like that. Yeah. I actually went to Vancouver like two years ago, I think, maybe. And then along the coast of Alaska, and they had the fisheries and stuff and salmon. And I thought those were pretty cool looking. Um, but do you fish in college at all? Uh Besides going to my grandmother's uh, <laughs> retirement <laughs> pond, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. Like, do you still go in the summers when you go back home? Yeah, so if we go on either spring break or our summer vacation, we try to go fishing. Okay. But. And then do you plan on doing it in the future with yeah, your definitely, yeah. kids? 
family. Yeah, whether they want to come with me or not, I'm going on fishing trips. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a, a story. So I've been fishing like a handful of times. And we were fishing in Siesta Key in one of those uh, like canals along mm-hmm. uh, uh, along the, uh, uh, I don't even know what they're called, just the canals yep. around the city. And uh, we were fishing, and then I casted it a little, I think it was actually, no, it wasn't even me. It was someone else, my friend. He casted it, got a little too far, and it landed in a yacht on the other <laughs> side of the canal. And we kept tugging it <laughs> and tugging it, so we probably ripped the cushion a lot. Um, so we finally just had to cut the line and run. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's, that's the biggest catch we've ever gotten. So <laughs> a little bigger than your... Uh, uh, it's a little, it's a lot bigger. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. You heard it, you heard it here first about the fishing expert Ryan Concannon. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. <laughs>